Hey guys, and welcome to this video guide on how to get the Exalted Blasters. Now these are arguably must-have trinkets, some of the best trinkets in the game, uh, both for their stats and pretty useful actives. But they can be pretty complicated to get. There's a lot of steps involved, a lot of merges and shops and stuff. So I'm going to be showing you how to get the trinkets first and then uh, near to the end of the video I'm going to be talking about the best ones, why they're good, stuff like that. But before we go any further I'm also going to include a pretty major spoiler warning um, particularly for this saga here, the Malara saga you get access to it after you finish Calamity here. So if you haven't yet done the Malara Saga, I definitely suggest you do that first because there will be some major, major spoilers in this video. Now then, to start off, we are going to go to Citizens. We're going to talk to Yuanta, the Malaris Citizens here to the war and it's going to be from the boss fight. Now this is how you get this trinket, the uncharged trinket. This is the first one. The stats are pretty, you know, whatever, but that's because it's just the first one. You see here, I have the level 90 version, Yuanta's Blaster 4. The boss fight drops, um, is a random drop, I should say. So it doesn't really matter which one you get. You can get the level 40 version or you can get the level 90 version. Uh, as long as you're in level 90, you'll see why that doesn't really matter which one you get. So for the next tier, this is a bit annoying because you have to walk back every time. We are going to go to Mr. Nameless. And we're going to go to Frostful Gifts and buy this gem here, the Lashayak Capacitor Gem. It's zero gold, which is nice, but that's because here in the Blaster Shop, you're going to merge it. So as you can see, this is why your Uncharged Blaster doesn't really matter. <clears throat> because for the level 90 versions you can merge the gem with any version of the uh, uncharged blaster so it's really convenient and the way this works is like it works for the same tier and below so like for the level 60 version you can use the what, tiers 1, 2, and 3, but you cannot use tier 4. Tier 4 you can only use for the level 90 version. So if you're level 90, you don't have to farm this innocence boss fight a lot. You can just do it once and upgrade it from this shop here. Alright, and next up is where the path starts to split. So that's where we have the amalgam Destiny and Doom Blasters. I'll cover Amalgam first because that's the first one you have access to. So for Amalgam, we're going to go to Myelos and Reactivation to the War and it's in this shop here, Amalgam Core. 20,000 gold for the Unstable Amalgam Core, which you're then going to take to the blaster upgrade shop and merge it here with your charging blaster to create your amalgam blaster. Uh, now I would say don't do the amalgam blaster first, you're gonna want to do the doom blaster first. So to get the doom blaster as well as destiny blaster, that's gonna be from the next Malaris. So we're going to go to Natha, the Reckoning, to the War, and 
you're going to go to revolution. Now, for those of you who remember, in this quest, there is a split decision. Um, here, I'll show you guys, actually. So if we go to revolution here, you end up with a split decision. You can side with Yuata or you can side with Natha. Now, for the Doom Blaster, you want to side with Natha, and for the Destiny Blaster, you're going to want to side with Yuanta. And you can redo this quest um, so you can get both cores. And then I'll show you guys real quick. Oh, I can't hit skip buttons because of my cape. If we battle here, and try to kill it real quickly. There's no real good way to show this without actually doing the fight here. After you win the fight, you're going to go to Stability Core Shop, and the core in here is going to be different uh, depending on who you side with. So if you side with Natha, you'll see the Infected Stability Core. If you side with Yuanta, you will see the Firmament Stability Core. So after you buy that, you're going to complete quest, you can keep this if you want, I already have it. And you're going to go to blaster config and you're going to upgrade into the respective trinket from here so if you have the infected stability core you'll get your blaster doom if you have the firmament stability core you'll have your blaster destiny and lastly would be the exalted blasters And that is also going to be from the Malaris. We're going to go to reawakening here to the war. And that is going to be from this quest, Rebirth. I'm not going to do this fight because it's really long. But after this quest, you will get the Forgotten Dream drop. And if you go to this store, you're gonna see you can merge your blaster into the respective Exalted Blaster upgrade. So, if you do the quest three times, you'll get your three Forgotten Dreams and you can get one of each blaster uh, if you so wish. You do have to kind of redo the whole process for each blaster. If you do want three blasters, I might just suggest 
doing each step three times. That way you don't have to go back to the start each time for each new blaster. It should be a, a fair bit faster that way. And if you don't want all three blasters, but you want to maybe swap your blaster, you can do that as well from this blaster configuration shop. If you go to initial charging, you can kind of do everything from here. If you have your amalgam stuff, your stability cores, and your core removal. Now core removal is for when you want to downgrade your blaster amalgam destiny or doom to just the charging blaster so this is how you would swap and you can see you can downgrade your amalgam destiny and doom blasters here to the charging versions and then you know you can go back to if you want amalgam you can go to reactivation if you want destiny or doom you can go back to Natha. I believe you can also swap from here and do the same thing. So that was how you would downgrade and swap to a different exalted or you know max level you want this blaster. All right and now for the, um, why they are good, I should say. So, if we look here at the exalted blasters, the reason I said that you should focus on getting the Doom Blaster first is because in terms of stats it is the single best offensive trinket in the game. 14 crit, 15 main stat is absurd. Those are stats that you would expect to see from a helm, not a trinket. Um, and then you know all the trinkets have this 10 light and darkness and 5 good and evil resistance. So really really powerful really good for light and darkness fights or good and evil fights and then we're also gonna check out its active so let me go to the training dummy here and show the active real quick so if we go to the training dummy and use the blaster here. See that it does five hits of 30% damage and it applies minus 30 avoidance for five turns. So magic pierce melee avoidance. Now, this is pretty useful. It's not the most useful. You won't be using this a lot by any means. But it is used in some challenges, notably Inevitable Equilibrium for decreasing um, Jarhatir's avoidance to allow your pet to get more hits in to break scales. So it's a, it's a pretty situational active, but you know, even if you never use the active, it is still more than worth having just for those er, just for those stats alone now then I forgot to pick up the blasters before I started recording but they should be in here here we go now as for which one to get second I would say probably 
the uh, Destiny Blaster. And if you recall, that is from siding with Yuanta in Re uh, in uh, Reckoning. And as you can see here, this is more defensively statted. It trades that 10 main stat for 10 whiz and end. And it still has that 14 crit, 14 bonus. So still good stats. Uh, generally, I would say it's not really worth trading 10 main stat for 50 extra health and mana. 10 main stat is just a lot more than 10 end and 10 whiz. So the main reason you would use destiny is for the active. So let's check out that active here. Try not to hurt your guys' eyes. And so for this active, I forgot to equip it. There we go. Does five hits of good. Same damage, so 150% total, but instead of minus NPM, it gives minus bonus. So this can be really useful when you stack it with another blind of your own class and then pair it with, you know, NPM stack to create a pseudo shield. Or if a boss has a lot of bonus, then you can use your trinket um, use your shield, use a blind, use scales, NPM stack, whatever. You get a lot of effective NPM to dodge attacks that you normally wouldn't be able to. And I forgot to mention, all the blasters have 10 cooldown, which is pretty short. So if you do need to use them a lot for whatever reason, they have a decent uptime. You know, 5 turns, 10 cooldown. So even though these stats aren't quite as good as Doom, I would say it has a, a marginally more useful active ability. Alright, and then lastly would be the Amalgam Blaster. Now this one is from Myelos, so you can get it, um, or you can get the Yuanta's Amalgam version of this earlier than Destiny and Doom. But to upgrade it to the Exalted Blaster, that's still going to be from Reawakening. So same time as Destiny and Doom. And you see this trades out that 10 main stat for 15 Charisma and Luck, as well as a bit of extra Wiz and End. This is pretty unimpactful. As for the Charisma and Luck, it's, you know, it's a bit interesting because they're like, pretty niche stats. Luck right now is like totally worthless. From 15 luck you get 1 crit, 1 MPM. Wow, incredible. That basically just doesn't matter at all. The 15 charisma though is kind of interesting. Um, for those of you who don't know, every 50 charisma up until 200 decreases your dragon's cooldowns by 1. So at 50 charisma your dragon's cooldowns are one turn shorter. At 200, they are four turns shorter. And this 15 charisma from your trinket is I believe the only way to get 200 charisma with charisma stack gear without sacrificing um, too much main stat or too much end. So, you know, it's it can be useful if you're really into charisma but you know it has no all resistance so it's still situational mainly the only reason you would use this is for its active um, which is also really niche so if we see it here again five hits of 30 percent for 150 percent total and plus 30 health for five turns. This decreases the target's healing. So I know this blaster has seen some use in challenges that do light and darkness damage that also have healing. 
but the only one I can actually think of is Archivist Illumina. Um, there was a strategy I believe Light Flare used because Illumina is a hard Archivist counter. He used the Amalgam Blaster along with Ancient Frost Moglin, um, Hack Magi Drone, and possibly Dragon Tickles or something to increase Illumina's health resistance to 100 so that she just wouldn't heal at all. Um, as for whether that's practical with other classes, not really. It's just not something you would ever need to do. Most um, light and darkness challenges that heal like Ash in, in Ash's case, you can stun him to prevent him from healing, so most classes just try to stun him. Um, you know, Sephiria, either her heal, her suck is too little of a heal to really matter, or her cloud nuke that also heals her, you just shouldn't be getting hit by in the first place. Um, other notable healing challenges like Wrath and Sloth, they don't do light and darkness damage, so you generally just rather have uh, some other trinket with all resistance or a corresponding resistance to decrease damage taken. So, you know, Amalgam, I would say, is definitely the most niche of the trinkets. However, I would still say it's worth investing in, particularly because luck is getting rework slash buffed soon. Uh, well, maybe not soon, but a rework slash buff to luck is in the works. So who knows, maybe that 15 luck will actually be really impactful sometime in the future. Uh, they don't take too much effort to get, it is like 40,000 gold though. So, you know, I would say it's still worth getting all three. Doom first, then Destiny, then Amalgam. You'll be using Doom a lot for challenges, for questing, because it's the most damage stat-wise you can get out of a trinket. You know, Destiny, good for the blind. Amalgam, very situational, but still worth picking up. And that covers the Exalted Blasters. I'm gonna be doing more guides on uh, gear in the future, I think. And then I'm also working on a suggested in-order challenges and uh, guide and kind of what gear to aim for from the inn. In the meantime, if you don't want to wait for that on Sexy Raccoon and Balt slash Amplified Trashes channels, they have like a shared playlist of basically every notable challenge for good gear done in a suggested order with like minimal gear, 200 point dragon, as, replica as replicable as possible. So definitely check that out. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks to Zach for helping me with the script and guide for this video. If you want to check out the written guide, I'll include it uh, as a comment because I think more people read comments than descriptions. And thanks for watching.